Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, TV land. Welcome to WeBeam TV, and this is Taboo Talk with Ray and Steve. I'm Ray Aminat, based out of Port Ritchie, Florida, and I'd like to bring my co-host, Mr. Steve Reed, uh, who's in an undisclosed safe house somewhere in Texas because, well, just because. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes yeah. Steve needs help. How you doing, Steve? Uh, Ray, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, as always, we have sponsors. I'm going to start off with our first sponsor, which is Heroes in Action. Heroes in Action is a nonprofit organization dedicated to violence prevention education. Uh, we have a headquarters training facility here in Port Ritchie where we offer programs for kids, adults, um, and then we go to schools and do lectures and seminars on anti bullying active shooter training, which I think uh, New York needs our programs out there. Um, and also, I'm the author of all of these books, The Adventures of Mushy the Martian and Bully Victim or Hero. You can go to our website, heroesinaction.us, for more information. On today's show, our topic is going to be the First Amendment with our special guest, Mr. Anthony Russo, who is the founder of Be the Change which is a movement and entertainment channel dedicated to truth and action. He is also the founder of the clothing brand Awake Not Woke, host of Truth Will Set You Free podcast, a Fox radio analyst, and a professional speaker on overcoming failures. Let's welcome Mr. Russo. How are you doing? Do you go by Mr. Miss? Are you buying hey, it? Are you? <laughs> it's tw it's 2022. Uh, I identify today as your guest on this show. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I identify as a unicorn, so I'll you know, just be aware. Uh, <laughs> oh, you guys are good. <laughs> so, by hey, you know, by the way, real quick, you brought up, you know a little bit about what you do before this and talking about kind of gun rights in New York City. And uh, I, I just want to bring up one fascinating point real quick. Uh, that was a gun free zone that that happened in. Very simple. And I'm going to let people think about that for a second. So I'm glad that gun gun control shows that it works. I'll leave that there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You got no arguments there. And the mayor, the first thing he did is he politicized it about more gun control. Mm -hmm. oh, so, mercy. Anthony, our country seems to be broken and very, very divided. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on politics in our country at this time? I think this is, uh, and, I, and I talk to a lot of people of different ages, and I think that this is probably one of the worst periods uh, in terms of the collective, uh, the collective divisiveness. That's, I know that's a weird combination of words in this country. And we have people that have never been more opposed. You cannot talk about topics. Everything has become taboo, interestingly enough, fitting for this show. All topics are taboo. Politics, religion, race, all of these different things. We can't have a conversation because of the way that social media and media across the board, mainstream media, has just destroyed the fiber of our country in terms of man-to-man, -man, woman to woman, whatever the, the gender may be. And it's it's gotten very ugly. So I think that this is a turning point because if we continue to go the path that we are in right now, it's uh it it doesn't have a positive. And I've talked to every generation from the great generation to the boomers to generation X to the young ones. And across the board, nobody has ever seen this kind of division. And that goes even back to the era of the Watts riot. So I, th I think it's a scary point in our country right now. I, I agree with you. And that's one of the reasons why I brought this prop here, uh, uh, Make America a <laughs> Mega Hat. Um, what is wrong with this statement, Make America Great Again? It's just because Donald Trump had said it or made it his brand, and people hate it because it's associated with President Trump, um, but what's wrong with saying, hey, I love my country, and I want to make it great. I want to keep it great. It's, it's actually really, oh, sorry, do you, you want to go, Steve? Go ahead, sorry, I keep talking. Well, I, I was just going to say, Ray, you got to stop being such a white supremacist. 
<laughs> Cis white yeah, male. That, that's, that's me, the uh, immigrant from Iran, as a white supremacist. <laughs> but, uh, you know, everyone called me a terrorist growing up, but uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you and Ahmed. Well, <laughs> well, I so I have one also that goes with it. So there you go. We have a we have a evening red hat. Mine says, "Let's <laughs> go, Brandon." Go. Um, <laughs> which you can get on my website. Moving on. So, um, no, I honest, plug. shameless plug. I've talked a lot about that phrase, ironically enough, because I think that it was such a misconstrued phrase, even from Trump supporters, because you've got this make America great again. And people can automatically hearken back. To, what do you mean? Great. There was racism and slavery. And look at how bad it was in the 70s and the 80s. But in all reality, if you take a step back, and I don't know if this was Trump's intention, it might not have been. But when America was great, you looked at the family unit and you looked at the way that it didn't matter if you were Hispanic, black, white. People respected their parents. They respected their elders. They listened to people, even if they wanted to defy a little bit, there was still a I don't know what my mom's going to do to me if I do this. I don't know what my dad's going to do to me if I do this. So there was still a level of respect, and it, and it led to a much more civilized country. Now, do I, I'm a, I have a lot of conversations on systemic racism, and I do believe there was an era in our country that caused where we are. I think the crack ep epidemic 100% broke apart the family unit, destroyed a lot of the underprivileged black neighborhoods that got us to where we are now. But that doesn't make an excuse to not try to figure out how to fix the problem now. And and again, make America great again is essentially let's have respect for the people that have come before us and let's find a way to pave a new future. And and I do think there's a lot of power in make America great again. Anthony, I got to I'm going to challenge you on a couple of different things. While I agree I, with you about 90 percent, I think it goes even farther and I think that a lot of the breakdown in the family and the household, specifically in the black households, goes back to the 60s and LBJ. And oh, yeah. when you talk about the tax code being punitive, when you talk about laws and welfare, welfare laws that were passed that basically said uh, a black woman can have a baby and we will give her X number of dollars a month. However, there can't be a dad in the house. Uh, yeah. Let's see, how can we destroy the American family, the black family? That's So I think it goes all the way back to that era as well. So yeah. that's number one. Number two, you said, you know, children used to respect their parents. You know, not only did I respect my parents, I respected other people's parents as well. 100%. And I grew up in a small town, and if I did something wrong, within 14.7 seconds, my parents would know. And when I got home that day, uh, I may have a difficult time sitting down. Yeah. So I, I think you get my hint. We don't have that. I was at a parking lot. It, you know, this goes back several years. And there was a mom and a probably about a 12 or 13 year old boy. And mom said, can you put that cart in the in the, the return place? So what does he do? He takes the cart and he heaves it across the parking lot. OK. And I all I did was was just said, really? You're too lazy to walk it into the little return area. Now, what do you think the mother did? Now, this goes back six, seven, six or seven years. What do you think the mom did? She looked she, at me and said, I'll take care of that. I know what his problem is. I'm like, lady, obviously, you weren't taking care of it. So there's a lack of respect from the children to the parents. But sometimes the parents are letting the, the thing slide like that. If I had done that with my dad, Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hello. It, it, Hello. it only up? takes one. It should only take once. And, and it's it's we've become so soft as a country because kids have almost become intelligent of like, sorry, mom. Sorry, dad. You can't touch me. I know. I know the law. It's like you're nine years old. You just shut up. Like like there there, <laughs> there is so many things that can be done. And, and, and the shopping cart thing is a perfect example of all the problems that we have, like 100%. That's a great way to look at it because that parent is going to get out of the car and do it themselves, teaching their kid absolutely 
Nothing. And and again, like you said, I agree with the LBG, uh, 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 LBJ. I agree with all of the issues dating back to that. And even further, you can look at generational issues in slavery. I 100 percent get it. It's not necessarily the fault of a minority public or even poor generational white white families, generational uh, uh, poverty stricken white families. But it is still and I do motivational performance coaching. It's still your responsibility. No, nobody's going to come help you just because it's not your fault. Right. Steve, did yeah. you want to so, take that? So, <laughs> I, 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 okay, I guess the show's done. Mic drop. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things. So you've got a... You've got both a positive and a pessimistic viewpoint on on our country today. What makes you positive about things? What makes you negative about the things? Why, why are you pessimistic, but at the same time you're positive about things? So I'm I'm uh, I'm pessimistic because of the state that we are in. We're exactly the place that we are, and you know, and I look at the news and I I feed off the news because that's what I do, and I and I don't recommend it for everyone because I think it's depressing. Uh, if you can't handle it, if you can't drink it and then regurgitate it in a way that uh, that creates some positivity afterwards, I actually suggest to people to avoid it at all costs. But the reason that I do think that there is some hope is because the powers that be, whether you can, whether you're a conspiracy theorist and think, it, well, conspiracy theorist in quotes, uh, or if you are uh, and you believe that there is this one world government or something that's that's a scary boogeyman coming from above or if you just think there's a collective hole of ignorance and stupidity in this world you at least can look at the fact that they have pushed the envelope so far that people are waking up and people are referring to it as a quote unquote red wave but i'll be clear i don't think that i don't think that uh, uh the republicans or democrats are that much different i do think the republicans are are better but i think they're both Two, two wings on the same bird. But I do think people are waking up to realizing that the current state of authority in this country is at a breaking point and that we are being taken advantage of. And the majority, that silent majority has become a vocal majority. And I think that we're going to see a shift because, again, the greatest trick the devil ever played was convincing the world he didn't exist. I think the world knows the devil exists now. And that's the biggest mistake that evil can make. And I do think there is a future that has uh, um, that has some positivity in it, because I think as a whole, we are we are waking up. We are we are becoming more awake. And that's, I think, a, a huge, huge positive. Now, I, I think, Anthony, a great illustration of, of what that awakening looks like is a few months ago, the state of Virginia had their, their statewide elections and a new governor was elected. Well, at the same time, parents were rising up because of some of the critical race theory, the stuff, I mean, the lies that were being taught in the public schools. And there were parents that were standing up to those lies lies in the school board meetings and there was one dad not a not a crt issue but one dad whose daughter was raped and the school board just turned a blind eye they didn't care they didn't think it was a big deal etc cetera, etc cetera. they covered it up and dad confronted them and he was arrested so what that did was that unleashed this terror of parents against the liberal school boards. And is that a red wave or a blue wave? No, I think that's a reality wave. I think it's just parents are fed up with all of the crap that's going on. Their kids are being taught CRT instead of reading, writing, and arithmetic. They're being taught right. about the LBGTQ, MWZY, whatever, yep. instead of... You know, let's get you better in science. Let's get you better in math so we are equipping you for real life. But we don't want to hurt their feelings because they're so fragile these days. I'm sorry. Pardon gotta, me for my I gotta, rant. I got to chime in on this a little bit. Um, how do we get back to getting respect back? Like the schools are not respecting the parents for wanting to guide their kids in the right direction and getting an appropriate education. Um, the kids are not respecting their parents because they're brainwashed by the schools and they're listening to the <laughs> schools more than their own family, their own parents. You know, it's every TV show that I see, they make uh, adult parents the 
look like idiots, uh, dum-dums, and the kids are always smarter than the parents. The kids know best. How do we get back, how do we get that respect back uh, in our society, in our communities, in our schools? Absolutely. So we, we unfortunately have, bec- have a, we have a very short attention span in this day and age, which is something that that's, that's the biggest thing that has to change because this is not a, well, we, we, we have a couple parents get on the school board. We, we make sure the curriculum is there and it'll all be good in a year. This is a long-term problem. And this is something that parents are going to have to fight for for a while. So they're going to have to take seats on the school board. They're going to have to see it through. They're also going to have to compromise in many ways. They can't because if, if you butt up against some of the parents that say they do want to teach some of the books that include black history. And there is a difference between CRT and black history. And you have to avoid the marketing campaign the left does saying that like, CRT and black history, you know, those are two different th- or these are not these are the same things. No, they're very, very different. And we should learn about black history. I think all kids I did. And it's like they're pretending like I didn't I did. None of my generation learned about it. So I think the key is you have to be in it for the long haul. I think governors like Ron DeSantis is that's a huge move to start trying to pass laws in your state that require parental rights. That was the biggest thing because the school boards, I'm sorry, the schools and teachers have gone without any kind of repercussions. They've had power of tenure. There's a great movie called uh, Waiting for Superman to show you can't even really get fired as a teacher. So there is there's nothing that is holding them back from teaching their own quote unquote woke agenda. And there is no, I love teachers are some of the most important people in our society, 100%. But a lot of these teachers came from very liberal, liberal institutions. There is always, always been the line that a teacher is somebody that can teach on something, but never actually do, which I think is a, I think it's a, a rough around the edges statement, but it does say something. These are people that love academia. Academia can be very dangerous if it's never put into action in an everyday society. So you have to find a way to be in it for the long haul, start addressing the teacher's problems, hopefully have governors, vote governors in. Make If I was running in, in, in a slightly red state, that would be my biggest thing is see what DeSantis did. That's what we need to do. It's not the don't say gay bill that never says don't say gay anywhere in it. It actually is a parental rights bill. And let's start finding a way to get our education on our children back and, and just be patient. Absolutely. You've got a lot of irons in your fire, uh, a lot of different projects that you're working on. Uh, including being on our show, Taboo Talk with Rand Steve. Uh, what do some of those projects look like that will help wake people up instead of being woke? Yeah, so I uh, I have Truth Will Set You Free. That's our channel on, on Facebook and YouTube and Rumble. Truth Will Set You Free USA. We do Truth Tuesdays. Uh, and I also post random rants throughout the, uh, throughout the week. And that, that allows us to really dive into politics, uh, be the change USA was where the company started. So it's hashtag be the change.com. And that whole concept was to take action. Uh, so I work on that as well. I've, I've come to realize in this modern day world and censorship and issues with social media, um, as much as I would love for this to be where I make my living, it's incredibly difficult. Uh, we, we, we originally had tens of thousands of views per week, and that slowly but surely has gotten chopped ever since January of 2021. Super weird. I don't know how that happened. Um, but we, I also, I, I have my hands in a lot of different businesses. I own multiple cars. I Turo uh, them. I'm in, I have an Amazon business. I do crypto trading, and I do all of it so that I can make sure I'm involved in my passion until maybe, hopefully one day, that truly pays off. And I'm working on a new podcast called Blunt Force Discussion that should be launching in um, sometime in the beginning of June, which, which will be a one-on-one Joe Rogan-style conversation with some, some of the bigger names. I know I've, I've worked with Chad Prather before. He's going to hopefully be one of my first guests, Dr. Brian Artis. I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting him Peter McCullough, et cetera, and just spreading truth, big fan of truth. So everything I do is centered around uh, the education of truth uh, to people, not my truth, not their truth, but trying to get to truth and also admitting when I'm wrong and knowing how to have a conversation with people. Because ultimately, if I can coach some of the viewers to realize that if you try to hit people over the head with a a sledgehammer that are yelling at you, you're not going to get anywhere. So equip yourself with facts 
education, information, but meet people with empathy, understand that they've been misguided by the media for so long. They've been misguided by misinformation. They've been lied to about what a truth and fact checker is and uh, allow them to all of a sudden start seeing them themselves on their own, be a listener. And then when all of a sudden they go, well, this seems a little fishy. That's when you come in with facts, education, and, uh, and try to start bringing people back to center. It, that's exciting. I I can't wait to hear more about that as you get closer. You know, one one of the challenges that we run into is people having a misunderstanding of what truth really is. Yeah, and they come at they come at things from their perspective, mm-hmm. which may or may not be truth. And right, and so I, that's that's the kind of the premise of, of what we're talking about here on Taboo Talk. We want to share the truth. It's an opinion show. But we're coming at things having done research on the different topics that we're talking about, and we're talking from a truth perspective. So, yeah. and you know, speaking of truth, and and I, you know, one of the things that we have to do, and you know this as a as a podcaster as well, is we've got to pay some bills, and that is a truth. That is a fact. In in our world and like you i would love to be able to do this this is one of my passions but we got to pay some bills and one of the ways that we're paying bills is with, with some of our sponsors and one of the sponsors is actually myself and i i'm a, a life and marriage coach and executive coach and i help people deal with different pains in their life but most recently i've been helping people with not emotional and mental pains but i've been helping people with physical pains and somebody introduced me to this little patch it's a wafer thin patch it's made by a company out of southern california the company's name is lifewave and what LifeWave does is with this particular patch, it's the X39 patch, it actually reflects your body heat back into your body and it stimulates your stem cells. It activates your stem cells to start working again. And the stem cells are really the, the mother stem cells or the mother cells for our entire body. So if your heart needs some regenerating, it'll send cells to the to the heart. If it's your liver, if it's broken bones, it will help you in the healing process. It will help with scar reduction. It will help with energy enhancement. It will help with better sleep. It will help with pain relief. When I was first introduced to it, I had some lower back pain issues, and these patches actually alleviated my lower back pain almost immediately. So if you'd like more information on the LifeWave stem cells or any of the other patch products that we have, reach out to me. I'd love to visit with you, give you more information. I've got a lot of information. So Ray, back to you. All right, thank you. Moving forward as a country that I love and I hate to see go down the toilet, where do you think we are go from here? Um, where do we go from here? Well, uh, I, again, I think the biggest thing is, is um, collective truth. And I, honestly, you know, since before you know, we talked, I talked about being on this show, Elon Musk buying uh, a decent sized stake in Twitter is a big deal. We have to have some of these people speak up um, and, and, and his power that he can, he can wield. And, and while we're, while we're talking about this, he didn't, he didn't take a board seat, which again, on paper, a lot of people can go, why didn't he do that? It's because it limits the actual ownership he can have in the company. So seeing people that are more awake and not woke, uh, taking these bigger stakes in companies that really do involve the First Amendment and the importance of it. And we're seeing the importance of it right now because n- no offense to those that disagree with me, the truth is not out there. The truth is not what we are seeing. The truth is a manipulated version and 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 pushed out version to, to control the masses. And I am not a conspiracy theorist. This is just uh, based on actual facts, statistics, things that I pull from the CDC at all times, the things I look at on governmental bills. As, as I mentioned earlier, the don't say gay bill is a perfect example of complete and utter misinformation. So finding a way to really hone in on cutting down of censorship and allowing First Amendment to, to run free again 
in this country to if, if you're going to allow the far left to speak, allow the far right to speak. Uh, and somewhere, hopefully, we meet in the middle and make people realize, because I'll look at some far right stuff and be like, seriously, bro, like that's that's a little too far. So I think from here, the First Amendment, as long as it is followed properly, somehow put back in check by by people that are going to hopefully monitor the federal government or continue to speak up. I think that's how we save ourselves. The First Amendment is, has destroyed us via social media to this point. But I think the First Amendment is what's going to save us. In the future. So I look at the Democratic Party is always playing the blame game and never being holding themselves accountable for things that they say. Um, what how do you feel about them saying it's the Russians? It's <laughs> it's 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 always somebody else, but nothing to see here, it's not us. I I, I, 100%. That's, that's, and that's where I think it becomes blatant. And I think that, unfortunately, when you look at Fox, and the, Fox News and the CNNs of the world, you're watching two completely different channels, and the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And, and uh, honestly, as much as people will, will talk poorly about Fox, Fox has pundits that are on the left, not, not very many, but they at least provide some kind of balance to their shows, uh, all nighttime TV is ma they make jokes about the right, so it, it automatically dumbs down that side. Um, but when you look at when you look at the way that they push information, in like Russia, for, first off, blaming Putin on the inflation numbers right now, which are already manipulated, eight point five percent is a joke. Like if you actually look at the the laundry list of of inflation numbers, including anything from gasoline to milk to et cetera. The CPI is what they call it. It's 8.5%, which is different numbers than they actually relied upon in 1981. They've, they've taken away gasoline. They've taken some stuff out of it. Our inflation is far worse than it was in 1981. It's drastic. Um, so they've found a way to at least like minimalize how bad it is. And even with them minimalizing it, they're passing the buck to, to Putin, which has nothing to do with it. And then you've got Russian collusion that was, that was such a huge news story. Meanwhile... Hunter Biden's laptop was completely ignored. Um, I, I, I honestly don't know how to get it in check unless you actually look at the whole issues with our government. And then it's a whole different story that could take hours and hours that include term limits, not allowing uh, people like Nancy Pelosi and her husband to to have insider trading because that's what want, makes people want to stay in office. You can't make two hundred thousand dollars a year and have a have a, a net worth of two hundred million. There's so many different issues in our corruption and government. Uh, that it, it really does. It requires a president like Donald Trump, but a little bit different to get in there and mix things up. The problem is, I don't know if that will be possible because the left and the right like things the way they are right now. Well, uh, yeah, Anthony, one of, one of the things that you're looking at is when you have the big guy that has a different set of rules than everybody else does and hunter is making sure that the big guy gets his cut on things and the big guy has four homes uh, a beach house on the on the coast of delaware and it, we've got selective truth that's being revealed you know on one side you have everybody on the left that's going after donald trump who is a legitimate billionaire and made the money based on his work in the real estate world and investments and so forth. But then you have the big guy that's getting money based on the collusion things with the Germans and the Russians and the Ukrainians and the Chinese and so forth. Then how do you ever get the truth out about the big guy when the big guy has the media in his back pocket? Yeah. And I, I would, you know, you, you made a mistake. You said Trump is a self-made. Well, I don't know if you said self-made billionaire. No, he, he, he started with $2 million. Mm -hmm. I, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I was making a joke. People love to say that he, he was handed a silver spoon. I would love <laughs> anybody out there to take 2 million and turn it into a billion. I wish you the best of luck. I, it, exactly. it's not that exactly. it's not how the real world works. Like he was handed a lot, but he also, there's a lot of people that are given 2 million by their parents and end up smoking crack and right. sleeping with their niece. Yeah, Hunter. And yeah, exactly. Thank you. I'm glad you I'm glad you picked that up. Uh, but but yeah, you you are you're 100% right and the fact that there is so much blatant information and and I and I say this, they have done a very good job the left of putting the lineup to where 
uh, uh, to where Joe can't get removed because they have set it up where God knows the left or the right does not want Kamala in office. And you look exactly. at Nancy Pelosi, like your their, their chain of commands is so bad right now that it's a scary thought. No, we've seen what Kamala does on an international level. She's even more embarrassing than a man that can't tie his shoes. And then you've got Nancy Pelosi that is the third reincarnation of the devil. So Joe has set himself up for this position where he can't get he can't get ousted. And even if there's text messages showing that like from Hunter to his daughter saying, don't worry, I won't make you give me 50 percent to to like like pop made me give him essentially making it clear he was giving 50 percent of the illegal money, the BS money that he was making. He was giving it to his father while he was like is anybody is anybody really paying attention to how bad that is? But no, it's but but what are we going to do? What are we are we going to have Kamala? Or are we going to have the corruption policy? of the FBI? That's the corruption of well, everyone else that's out there. That is not if you were in the military and you said something or did something that was deemed illegal against our country, you would immediately be court-martialed or whatever the steps are where you no longer hold the position that you hold. Why can't we hold our politicians to those same standards? That's what gets me. Well, Ray, the problem is, is that Trump sent out mean tweets and he had, you know, he strong-armed the, the president of Ukraine. So obviously he's a bad person. I mean, he just, we got it. We got it. I'm sorry. It's just, he's bad. It, and, God, it's scary to think that Trump was taken off of Twitter. ISIS is still allowed. Uh, Juanita Broderick just got removed. She's the woman that got R-A-P-E-D. I don't know how I, I have trouble saying the word because I know it gets people in trouble by the by Bill Clinton, allegedly. But she got removed for talking about uh, uh, issues with the election. Meanwhile, there's ad busters, which is an uber left group literally telling people, on Twitter, without it still hasn't been re removed five days later, telling people for the sake of climate change to go flatten tires in rich neighborhoods of SUVs that are gas guzzlers. And that's OK. Like what what world are these are these tech giants living in that don't think they are destroying the fiber of the American people? Well, you know, Anthony, I, I just saw a report from Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she is asking the Capitol Police to investigate one of the late night talk show hosts, because he is encouraging people to commit violence against her. Why is that wrong for her to press charges or to move forward with that? But it's OK for the left to do the same thing. You know, what was it? Kathy, I forget what her name was. And she had a Kathy Lee uh, Griffin. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she, she has a, a, a severed head of Donald Trump. That's all bloody. That's OK. But. For Marjorie Taylor Greene to make some comments about, you know, I'd like to have have him investigate. And I, I, I don't pay any attention to late night TV, so I don't even remember who it was. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Anyway, Kimmel. Uh, but but why why is why is it okay for Jimmy Kimmel to encourage violence? And where's Will Smith Smith when you need him? She needs to be slapped. Uh, yeah. Hello. I, I, you're right. And, and, it, and it goes a lot with pharmaceutical issues as well. You've got um, you've kind of got unchecked power there that has led to doctors doing the same thing to other doctors. I just saw a MedPage article a couple days ago where this one doctor is suing the American frontline doctors for harassment. She's like, my life has been in jeopardy. This has been horrible for me. Meanwhile, this same doctor a and because there was a, sorry, there was a, I should lead into it. American frontline doctors did a video on her being this, uh, uh, they made like kind of this, this mockumentary of her being this serpent, this horrible person and, and kind of making a joke out of a very, uh, out of the seriousness of what she was doing. And again, it was a production film and it also gave raw facts of, of some of the stuff with her and with Pfizer. She was the same person several months before that force fed for these American frontline doctors who are, have the same education, just as talented, different opinion in science, apparently. And she was forcing them to lose their jobs. And she has the audacity to say how horrible it's been for her because they made a, produ a professional documentary. It just goes to show the danger of, of having a voice that is different than what the mainstream media, big pharma, 
uh, is pushing. That is so yeah. true. And it comes to that time when we need to pay for our show. Once again, I don't want to talk about my friend Natalie Thurman with the Shackley organization. Natalie has been with the Shackley company for 41 years as an independent distributor. And Natalie gave me a few little factoids about Shackley. Did you know that over 150 Olympians are regular users of the Shackley nutritional supplements i think that's a pretty significant thing considering their their attention to quality one of the things that a lot of people don't know about with the shackley organization is they are environmentally friendly so they were making oh green products long before it was a popular thing to do and they had taken out phosphates from all of their cleaning products which the phosphates were actually killing lakes in some of the northern states so if you're looking for a way to environmentally protect and you're looking for some good quality products whether it's nutritional supplements quality cleaning products those types of things then you need to reach out to Natalie Thurman today. Again, Natalie's been involved with the Shackley organization for 41 years, and I tell her all the time, uh, Natalie, you understand, you don't do nothing for 41 years if it don't work. Shackley's been around for 65 years, and I promise you will be very happy with their products. So reach out to Natalie today. Anthony. Love me some Shackley. Love Shackley, by the way. I, 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 that was as a very young, my mom was a chiropractor. Uh, so as a kid, that was one of the first supplements I ever, first vitamins I ever took was Shackley. So there you cool. go. Been doing it for 65, 66 years. I love it. What's up? What's up, Ray? What's going on? What's uh, cracking? What do you got? I, I was going to say, you know, I started Heroes in Action, and it's, it's our actions that deem us heroes, what makes us a hero. Uh, you don't have to always wear a cape or always wear some type of a uniform to be a hero. It's what we do um, to improve what's going on around us at home, at school, at work, anywhere. With you, be the change. Um, I, I, I love what that stands for. Can you elaborate a little bit more on how you came up with that or how you created that? Absolutely. Yeah. So I live in uh, I live in Dallas. And in 2016, uh, there was the police shooting that obviously was national news. Um, sadly, I think people forgot about it too soon. But five police officers were killed in the line of duty. And I started thinking about what was going on. And I was growing up. Um, I was raised very liberal. I still consider myself liberal in many ways. Uh, but I, I started changing Somewhere in the 2010, 2011, when I started a successful business, I started looking at the world in a different way, self-responsibility, and just shifting my political views a bit, and also realizing the importance of police and society and how much I appreciated them. And in 2016, there was, with, with a lot of the civil unrest in this country, leading all the way from Michael Brown to Trayvon Martin and all these different things, there was a police shooting in Dallas that caused uh, a protest. And you had police officers there that were protecting those that were protesting against them. And I found that very interesting. And then at the same time, there was five police officers that lost their life that day. And it happened a mile from my house, it was helicopters, and it, it had a profound effect on me. And I started thinking, why is it that our country is so hell bent on protest without any action? And I started having more conversations. So I wrote kind of a whole dossier that night, got me in a lot of trouble with my with the company that I own because I started it off wrong. I started with F Obama, which probably wasn't the right way to, do, to go about it in the beginning. And I, and I think I've, ch I've learned to change my words a bit, but ultimately it looked at the fact that we just don't care to do anything except for yell. So it is an action, like you said, with, with, with your charity, it's an action over awareness. There's very few things in this country that we don't already know is wrong. I would say that there's outliers like we didn't know about the Flint water crisis until it was too late. That would have been something it's like, if you know something, let's maybe have a protest. But in terms of some of the issues in the inner city and and some of the killing of the police officers or the, 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 uh, the unfortunate killings of black people, I think is completely misinformation by the media. The statistics don't back it up. 
And instead, what people do is they protest. If you have a problem with it, go and volunteer. Go into your communities. That same two hours that you spend fighting on social media about what's wrong, you can spend finding a charity to go donate your time or sponsor uh, a, an inner city youth or or be part of big, big brothers, big sisters. Actually do something. And that's where the idea came from. And I started a, a whole process in 2016 that led me to where it is now, which I still am trying to figure out exactly what to do with it besides spread truth, information, positivity. I partnered with some great people along the way, one of them being Cashley Kelly, who's uh, who's one of the January 6th protesters that unfortunately is still incarcerated, even though he did nothing violent. But it's 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 a long it's a long chain of people that I've gotten to meet along the way that are there to be change makers in this world. And um and yeah, be the change spun a little bit into the clothing side of awake, not woke, and and uh, and our news stuff of truth will set you free. But ultimately, it is all about the concept of uh, us uh, above all action. And and when there does is a need for awareness, that's when you create it. But take action, do something. That's pretty much that's pretty much what be the change is. Okay, so Anthony, you say you want people to take action. Give us an example of what you mean by taking action. Yeah. So, um, I mean, a perfect example is volunteering. And I think, unfortunately, in this country, it is it is way too difficult to volunteer. And whether you are a follower of Christ or, or religious in any way, shape or form, churches provide the best avenue to figure out where to uh, to volunteer in, in, in underprivileged situations. So if you have a very direct issue, if you if your issue is climate change and we're not going to go into the issues I have with that. But if that is your issue, make sure that you're a part of some kind of special recycling program or you're, you're legislating in your local areas to make sure they're doing the right things. Because I got news for a lot of those people recycling. Most of the stuff you recycle ends up in the trash anyways. So find your cause. Everybody has a different cause. Don't judge other people's cause because everybody's got a different background, a different reason of, of what makes them tick. And whatever your cause is, share what you're doing. Share how you're helping people. I don't think, I think the days of like, oh, you're being a braggart that you gave $5 to that bum on the street is done. It's positivity spreads positivity. There's way too much negativity. Uh, I think it's contagious when you do something and you see what it does to people and how it lights people up and lifts people up. So whatever you do, share it, show people. That's the, that is what the, the great part about social media can be. Share what you're doing to create change individually, whether it's volunteering with kids, whether it's uh, donating and going to different places, working in, in food kitchens on a holiday, do something that actually creates change in the exact area you are. And the last thing I'll say is there, I, I love it. Right when I started Be The Change, I started talking to these big climate change activists and I love when I talk to them. And I would say, so you you know you know you're big into recycling yada, yada and a lot of times they would stop me and they would say well I would be but my building doesn't recycle so I'm like if you care that much don't you think you would you know get together a bag and then go drop it someplace so again it just shows the this this version of activism has become so lazy and uh, so misguided that oh well, I think I'm changing the world just because I'm tapping on some keys on social media and and hopefully we can change that paradigm. Uh, Ray or, or uh, Anthony, this is what we call hypocrisy. Back in the eighties, I was living in, in Southwest Virginia, and a group of us from my church went to a pro-life march in downtown DC on the Mall in DC, and it was either the week before or the week after. I don't remember which it was, but it was right around the Earth Day celebrations. When we left the mall in D.C., the mall was spotless. You could not find a piece of trash anywhere. However, the folks that were there protesting or whatever, the week before, week after for Earth Day, mm. there were tons of trash that had to be scooped up by dump trucks and front end loaders and hauled off. Now, this is what we what we call hypocrisy. So if you work in that high yeah. rise building and, and, and well, my building doesn't recycle, okay. So start your own recycling bin and bag it up yourself and take it home. Whatever. 
Okay, so so I agree with what you're saying. I totally agree. So it's not just verbalizing and making words. It's actually living up to it and taking action yourself. So I, I commend you for what you're doing. Take action. Don't just talk about it. Take action. Yeah. You know, and I got to say, I, I'm remiss. I, I When you were asking some of the things that I was doing, I forgot one of the big things I'm doing that is talking about, because I think local, learning a little bit more about your local is a big deal. And the same reason why you and I actually uh, are even on this podcast right now, Susan Hamilton, I do a show with her, uh, with OBBM Network News. And we do a weekly show that comes out that literally, because this is something that I've been getting better at over the last six months, eight months, is the importance of local elections. And that goes for everything we just talked about, taking action in your local community. In order to actually do these things, you actually have to get involved. So, And, and that's OBBM Network News is what I'm doing with her. And we talk about specific candidates. We talk about local news. And then we touch on how it relates to national news. So it's very important to get involved in your local community, especially school boards. Yeah, absolutely. Well, totally agree with you. When I was living in St. Louis, uh, I had my police chief approach me and say, hey, Ray, can you sit on, uh, be a police commissioner, which is a board of commission that oversees uh, duties of law enforcement officers, their behaviors. We, we're, we're, we're in the process of interviewing them to be a candidate for an officer for our department, or if they did something, we would be the ones that would hire or fire. And I'm like, why do you want me to be a police commissioner? And, and then I sat back and I said, because I say a lot of the same things you say, get involved. Uh, and here was an opportunity for me to not be a hypocrite, but to get involved and practice what I preach. So when I was in St. Louis, I was a police commissioner for about four or five years until I made the move out here to Florida. And that was an eye-opening experience for me to look at the politics of dealing with the mayor, dealing with the border alderman, dealing with all of the different pieces to make our city grow and safe for all the families that live there. Um, so yes, 100% people need to get involved in any way they possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you don't have time, sorry, I was just, the last thing, if you don't have time, Typically, it means you're busy with work, it, it, and it's not saying give two hundred dollars, give something to the cause. Like if you've got, if you don't have the time, give twenty bucks. Find 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 a charity that actually does something yes. good. Anyways, sorry, go ahead. No, you no, you're you're good. You you made something, made a comment earlier about churches getting involved and and having a uh, a figure on the pulse of the community. My wife and a, a group that we lead at church. Uh, they went to the North Texas Food Bank this past Saturday, and they volunteered to help pack boxes and get things ready for those people that, that need some additional help. So those, those kinds of things. So there, there are plenty of charities out, that are out there that are looking for people that will step up to the plate and help. There's an organization in, in North Texas that it's called Samaritan's Inn. And it's a, a transitional shelter type of a facility. And we've tried on numerous occasions to volunteer there. And thankfully, they've told us every time, we don't need you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that is great. I, I love that. Then talk to us about your clothing line. How can, how can we help support you? And what does the clothing line do? Is it primarily just to sell products so you can pay your bills? Or what, what's, the, what's the purpose behind your clothing line? Yeah, so we, we like to use it as a, a billboard uh, for the brand. When, when Be The Change started, it was a lot of just Be The Change stuff. And we were donating 15% um, to, to different charities. And a lot of them, you know, we were, uh, were inner city type stuff right now. We've broadened the line. Cause we, we realized that be the change doesn't necessarily fit all the different messaging. Like you can see the hold the line t-shirt on there. Uh, the basics of awake, not woke, make America think again. Um, there, these are, we use predominantly American made products. So it's done on Shopify. Um, and it's essentially to spread a message. So it's awake, not woke store, dot com and it's awake for the uh awake is the 15 percent off code for for anybody that goes on there um we we are still we 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 do other drives in terms of donating 
we uh, we definitely can use as much help as we can get right now to fund our shows. So we actually are currently not donating that. I donate personal money to different charities, but that one uh, is just covering costs at this point, just especially since things have gotten a little bit more expensive. Yeah, Thanks a lot, Joe. Have. So <laughs> what, what do you mean when you say awake, not woke? So mean? woke... So woke, great question. Uh, Woke was a big phrase, obviously, a couple of years back. Everybody's like, I'm woke. I'm woke. I think I even considered that phrase. (laughs) I liked it a couple of years ago because I think that there was it got it got bastardized, much like the whole concept of Black Lives Matter. Black lives, of course, matter. BLM sucks. Anyways, so (laughs) and not the Bureau of Land Management. So same concept. Woke, uh, (laughs) woke got bastardized. And um, and and now it's the concept becomes be awake, be awake to everything going on around in the world, uh, the world around you. Stop paying attention to what the media tells you. So woke is this culture that I think a lot of the political parties all over the world. I heard a, a, a woman in France who is running for president trying to get rid of wokeisme or whatever the French version of the word is. And it's fascinating. So getting rid of that woke ideology that, that thinks that every social justice uh, warrior out there is doing the right thing instead of uh, actually being pragmatic towards fixing problems. The way you fix problems is buying a, be, by being awake to what's going on in this world. So would you say that Ron DeSantis is awake and the Disney people are awoke? It, it, the Disney people are misguided on so many levels. I don't even think woke properly fits Disney. Uh, I would say DeSantis is awake. He's awake to what's going on, especially the way, God, when he yelled at the kid to take the mask off, yes. he's like, you can, you can leave it on if you want, but it's not, it's, it's theater. And I thought that was great. I don't think so, he was mad at the kid. He was mad at the establishment making the kid. And right. DeSantis was like, yeah. what are you guys making these kids do? I think he was mad more at the schools for pushing that agenda. Yeah. And and ultimately the what 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 Disney does is it's a, and and it, it encompasses the word woke I guess, which is one gigantic virtue signal that only goes in one direction uh and and a perfect uh um image and mirror of this right now is when you look at what Disney is doing obviously with the don't say gay bill and this all inclusive uh, uh trans action that they're doing which again, I'm I if somebody trans is getting beat up, I will protect them. I, I believe their life is 100% is equal to everybody else out there. But just because somebody has a different lifestyle doesn't mean I have to celebrate it. It means I have to accept it. And we skipped completely over that. Meanwhile, Disney is still building in China. And China is committing so many atrocities. You've got what they've done to the Uyghurs uh, for for. A, a long time. And then you've got what they're doing right now with this COVID zero policy where they're killing pets, where they're keeping people forced in their homes. They're not allowing them to speak up. They're, they're separating children. This, this is where the NBA, Disney, all these quote unquote woke companies that stand so much for social justice are allowing atrocities in other parts of the world and Disney specifically profiting while they are building huge facilities in these countries. It shows they don't care. They're literally doing what placates the woke mob right well guys we only have a few more minutes i'm going to try to wrap things up here mr russo thank you for a great discussion as always um uh, as we live in this cancel culture and try to navigate through it uh, i wish you all the success and if there's anything that we can do to help you with that we would love taboo talk would love to be a part of that those of you that are viewers out there, if you, would, if you would like to post questions in our Facebook page or our YouTube page so that we can answer them. If you're a business and you'd like to be a sponsor on our show, we'd love to have a discussion with that. Just go to Taboo Talk with Ray and Steve uh, at gmail.com. Um, and once again, Heroes in Action is one of the sponsors. Uh, I, I, I love the the closeness in message that we have in getting people to take action so that they can be heroes. I always say be tuned in, not tuned out to what's going on around you so that you have a good reaction time to be able to verbally and if necessary physically handle the situation. You know, it's arm yourself, you know, knowledge is not power. It's the ability to apply the knowledge that gives you a power. So people, get educated. 
learn how to apply that knowledge so you have the power to make a difference in your communities and your schools. Thank you, Anthony, for coming on to our show. Steve, if you got any final comments you'd like to share with the last minute that we've got? Well, I'm, I'm excited also to have Anthony on the program. And I, I'm so thankful that a few weeks ago I reached out to Susan Hamilton and said, hey, I, I need some additional people. And Anthony, I got to tell you, she was, uh, you were the, the first one on her list. She says, oh, you've got to talk to Anthony. So, <laughs> so we had that conversation shortly thereafter, and I'm glad we were able to get you on the program. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for being the change or helping to facilitate the change, being a change maker in the process of this thing called life. The only time we're going to get back into being awake is if we get rid of the wokeness and really think things through. So thank you for what you are doing. I greatly appreciate it. And I'd love to have you come back on and uh, and help bring us some more insights. We appreciate it. I'd love to. And and we'll, let's set that up. And again, anything that I can do to help your your uh, organization as well, Ray, would love to do it. And I work with with, with veterans and uh, with the Great American Syndicate as well. So we'll, we'll connect on that and let's see what we can do. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. So everybody, this is Taboo Talk with Ray and Steve. Thanks, and we'll see you guys on next week's show. Have a good day. Thank you again, Anthony, Steve. Be good.